Hello everyone, welcome to LearnPy with ABCD, anybody can do well. So LearnPy is a, a Learn Python development and uh, today we'll be learning to install um, the Python environment, uh, the Python software. So uh, when I say LearnPy, I'm not talking about uh, learn how to make a uh, meat pie or a dean crab pie. Um, the dean crab pie is some meat pie that has gained popularity in the Ghanaian community. So we are not going to learn how to make a dean crab pie. <laughs> Just for fun. Okay, so um, um, Python. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you how to install Python in today's session. And then, uh, so why do you should go to python.org as seen here, python.org. Click enter in your browser. And then let's see. So Python is a programming language that lets you work quickly, the great systems more effectively. Okay, Python is very readable. Okay, very readable. And then um, uh, let's see here. I'm going to scroll down. You can see the use um, Python. What people are using Python for, or you can use Python for. So for web development, using these frameworks. Um, graphical user interface development, scientific and numerical, um, so SciPy, Pandas, software development, system administration. Okay, so there's a whole lot you can use Python. From web development, so automation, etc, etc. Okay, so to download it, so I'm going to the download here, and I'll click on Python. So there's a latest version, I'll click on it, um, then it's going to get download. Um, downloaded. So I already have it. So uh, let me check. Uh, let's just go through something here. Uh, let me cancel it, and then I'm going to use my CMD command, and then I'll show you the version of Python that I have. CMD. So Python space hyphen hyphen, and then a version. Okay, so I'm using the latest version. Let's see. Uh, so I have 3.8.5. Okay, so that's the latest version that I have. Okay, so Python is downloaded on my system, and then uh, let me see what we can do here. Uh, let's go to Anaconda. Okay, so Anaconda, um, I think this program will be learning to use uh, Jupyter Notebook and then. PyCharm Atom, so you can use any of these um, IDs. Okay, so Jupyter Notebook, well, I think uh, I'll switch between Jupyter Notebook and then PyCharm. Okay, so for PyCharm, let's okay, first let's go to anaconda.com slash um, products slash individual. Okay, and then when you scroll down, you can download it. Let's download it. I'm going to download for Windows, so I'm using 64 bits. So you click on it. I already have uh, an account installed. Uh, so uh, let me see. Let me just cancel it. Uh, then um, now, um, so to install an account, when it's done, you put it in a folder and then uh, you double click in the folder. It should open a window where you can uh, go through the process of downloading them. So you would have to look for. Okay, so um, in this page, we have a video tutorial to get you started with Anaconda. Um, but what you can do is um, you would have to follow the instructions in the, like, uh, installing Anaconda. Okay, so we'll be using Anaconda as a package for like. Um, Python environments that has certain applications like Spider, Jupyter Notebook, and then some other applications that you can use for the Python projects, including machine learning and then um, artificial intelligence. Okay, so uh, let's see. So when you follow the instructions and then you download them, already in the um, course outline, I've in, uh, put a link where you can download. Uh, you can watch. Um, how to get it installed on your system and then let me see um, okay so we are done with python uh, anaconda okay so let's go to pycharm so pycharm is very popular in that um, 
It simplifies your coding for you. It gives you hints in the coding environment. Okay, so, so there's a PyCharm page. So jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. And then you, uh, let's scroll down. Then. You can decide to take a tour. We are going to scroll down and download PyCharm now. So PyCharm has um, two versions, a community version and then a professional version. So uh, I'm going to use the community version. I'll click on download PyCharm. Okay, so uh, PyCharm is going to get downloaded. Okay, so uh, while we wait for it to download, uh, you know, you'd have to install Python first before um, we use the PyCharm. I think uh, PyCharm wouldn't run without a Python program installed. So uh, let's go. So let's go straight to um so once i'm done already i have anaconda so i'm going to click on my windows and then i'm going to type anaconda okay so anaconda navigator okay so you can see i already have jupyter notebook here and i've also pinned it on my taskbar but let's just go straight to this place okay so i'm going to wait for you to prepare the environment for launching the service Okay, so there's the Anaconda environment, and these are the applications they can use to um, create things. Okay, so what we'll be using here, we need a Jupyter Notebook, not Jupyter Lab, but Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to click on launch, and then it should launch in my default browser. So once it's downloading, it will launch my interface for uh, Jupyter Notebook, so I can start using Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so here, okay, so there's Jupyter Notebook, and these are folders. Okay, so you can click on any of the folder and then start your Anaconda project. Um, let me see, uh, your Py Python projects. Okay, so dot ipy uh, Python, uh, ipy are Python projects, ipy, ipy, and the uh, Jupyter Notebook. Uh, Python project. Okay, so to start a new project, we just click on new, and then click on Python three. So this Python three. Uh, let me work. So when you want to know um, services that have been installed or um, libraries that have been installed, just go to help, and you can see we have these libraries that are already installed. Okay. Okay. So there's Jupyter notebook, and then uh, let's see file. Can create a new notebook you can save rename okay so let's rename okay. 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 so then python or lenpy okay and that's auto save uh, so let's print our first program Shift and enter to print it out. So shift and enter, or you can uh, click on run. So let's try that. Uh, I'm going to sell and then clear the output. So sell, clear output, clear. Sorry, sell current output, clear. Okay. So just click on run, and then it should run. Okay. Okay. So there's another platform. Um, Atom called Atom, so just input at um, atom.io and then you can download Atom. But I wouldn't be using um, Atom, maybe I might switch to Atom somewhere in the future or the lesson, but um, I'll focus more on Jupyter notebooks and probably PyCharm. Okay, so uh, PyCharm is done by like uh, downloading. So I'm going to click on PyCharm. Then I'll click on next. You can change the destination destination folder, but I'm leave it to this. Then click next. Then create desktop shortcuts. 
Dy. Okay, let me just continue next. So we're going to wait for it to install. Okay, so it's done. Uh, I'm going to run it. Finish. Okay, so you can decide to choose your theme. Then go for Dracula. And just go straight, start using PyCharm. Click on new projects and then location, PyCharm project, Python project. Okay, I'll get your MV. Create. Click on for new. Sorry, I'm going to click on for new project. A little test, and I'm going to click create new window. We had an error, so let's go to new project. Then we need to change it to use the Python interpreter. So, great. So let's see. New window. So, it's creating the virtual environment for us to get started with our Python project. Okay, so these are environments. I'm going to clear these. Let's check our first. To run, run name. Okay, so hello world. Okay, so it's printed in our terminal. Okay, so that's that for PyCharm. Okay, so main.py is our file. Okay, so that should be it for PyCharm. Okay, let's see what else we need to do. Okay, so I'll see you in the next lesson. Hello everyone, welcome to LearnPy. Okay, so today we'll be learning um, Python lines and, and sentences. Okay, so that said, uh, let's see. So in Python sentences, we have the equals or uh, the equal to sign um, as an assigner. Okay, so let's say um, x equals 2. Okay, so x is not equal to 2. x, the variable x is assigned the value 2. Okay, so equal to assigns the value to um, a variable. Okay, so let's say this should be, uh, let me comment. Um, so this assigns the value to, to um, x variable. Okay. Then let me go to so we have um, expression. So let's try an expression. So x equals um, two plus three plus three. Okay. So this is is going. This is an assignment with an expression. Okay. So this is an assignment. Assignment with with an expression. Okay. 
like so this our assignment our assignment okay and then this is our expression okay so two plus three is going to be assigned um to x okay so x the variable x is a memory um, in our computer where this expression will be stored okay so let's try this um, print so using the print statement of sorry print function okay so the print function prints out um, whatever is stored inside um, a variable or whatever you would like to print out okay for your viewer to see okay so so let's say print x okay, so this is going to be that's going to be um a print function so this is our print function and then uh, we have um, the operator so the plus sign is the operator x is our variable and then this is our value okay. so let's see uh, okay so you can see we printed it out so the expression here okay so two here is um, so here is a value and this value is assigned to x that's our variable and then x here we are trying to do an expression so x here 2 plus 3 is going to be assigned um, the value to um, that's 5 in x and then we are printing that value that is stored or assigned to x uh, which is 5 using the print function okay so that's it for python lines and sentences and then the assignments and then expressions so thank you see you in our next tutorial Hello future developers, welcome to another tutorial ABCD. So today we'll be learning about variables and then some naming conventions. Okay, so what are variables? So variables are just a name place or a memory where a um, programmer defines and can store and re retrieve variable uh, values. Okay, so uh, let's try something. Um, just be quick, fast track on this. So I'm creating a variable called K and I'm assigning it a value of four, um, 1. Then I'm going to print out that value. Okay, so when I print k, I should get a value of one. So I've assigned or I've stored, um, I've created a memory k, and then uh, in that memory is a value um, one, which is stored inside that variable. So variables are a good way, like <clears throat> in every program language, you will meet variables. Okay, so now uh, variables to are case sensitive. Okay, so or you can also change the values of your variable. So let's say k equal and then assign a value of three. So when I print, no, this is wrong. Okay, so I need to take this tab out. Take this out. Um, so k equals so k and then I'm assigning it a value of three. Okay, so when I print k, the value of k should change to three. Remember, it was first one. So now we have it as three here. Okay so variables can be changed okay that's the values of variables can be changed and then variables too are <coughs> sorry case sensitive so let's say i'm creating a variable house <coughs> okay so when i print this okay when i run this you can see i have the value of one okay but let's say uh, let me change something so let me change this to small h and then when i run it okay so just shift enter or use the run you can see i have 50. now the reason how I, why i have 50 is i've already created a variable house somewhere where i've stored in some values okay so here let's just work on let me say i'm going to create a variable key so the key here the k is small and then when i'm printing it i'm using a what a capital k so you can see k key is not defined in line three okay so our error here is because um we've not created a variable key with the k being a capital that's why okay so the other thing i have to do here is to change this to small and then when i run it you can see now we have the value um, the value for our key okay so remember um so always use um like the same name um, in your variable and then we are printing them out okay so let's try this so here let's try some naming 
conventions in Python. So names, so um, it's a good practice to always use some naming conventions and um, like your programming or in Python. Okay, so we have camel case underscore and then um, snake case and like. But let's try this. So you can start with just this. So let's say hello as a variable. Then you can also use you can also use let's say underscore and then hello. Okay, so so underscore and then a variable name, or you can just type that variable name. You can also so when there are two words, okay, you can use so let's say first name, so first and then underscore name. So let's say last name should be last underscore name. Okay. Uh, this would make your programming um, very readable by yourself and then by others or your team so you can also use last and then um, and then you add a number so a word and then a number okay by a bad name a bad name you, you would rather if you so bad names you can say let's say a number before a word um, it's a bad naming okay so bad way of naming your variable so let's try something here and then you see why so you can see 23 when I put last, you can see the 23 is highlighted green. Okay. So that's a bad naming. So if you use hash and then you use some strings or numbers, it would also remember the pound sign or the hash um, symbol sign is used for commenting. Okay. So um, it's not used for um, creating variables. Okay. So let's say using the period sign. So let's say high dot one two or high dot high or whatever it's a bad naming convention okay or it's a bad naming practice okay. so you can see let's say uh, what should we try out okay so a good practice is to use mnemonic naming Okay, so a mnemonic name is a name that makes sense for its purpose. Okay, so let's say you are creating a, a, um, a, a variable to store, let's say, uh, or you are creating, you are working on a project um, of a bank, okay, or a bank info, you can use money. So since money is related to banks and others, um, you can start using money, okay, and not X, Y, Z, or A, B, C, D, or something, because, um, you, you might you might you might get confused at some point in time or if you're working in a team or you're sharing your project or collaborating on a project um, it won't people wouldn't understand what you're trying to do if you use abstract name like xyz123 okay so if you create a variable like money which is um, for a banking or calculation something it should work well so let's say with um, price so price is called to 700 that's a good naming because you are going to you are communicating to others that uh, you are creating a price uh, variable and then you are assigning it a value of 700 and then let's say speed 2 you are talking about uh, speed okay and then you assign it a value of 30 so this is how to work with variables so um, thank you and then see you thank you hello everyone welcome to lempi um, today we'll be learning how to do multi-line declaration of variables Okay, so an example here you could see x comma y equals five comma six. So here what is happening is the value five is going to be assigned to x and then the value six is going to be assigned to the value um uh, the variable y. Okay, so let's try something. So I'm going to say w equals w comma r equals let's say three comma six. Then I'm going to print out their values okay so print w and then another line which prints um, r okay so you can see how to declare multiple variables okay and also we have um, here another way of also declaring multiple um, assigning as a single value to multiple variables so let's say z b c d okay we want to assign each and every one of them like the value of one so for us not to go through a long process of doing something like z equals one b equals one no you can just z equals um, b equals c equals d equals one 
and then here I'm printing out the values okay so when I click on this you can see the value of z is 1 so all of them all these variables have the value of 1 okay so um, let's try one out so I'm going to insert a, a cell and then I say w equals e equals y equals let's give it a value of 2 I'm going to print into bracket. Let's print W. Sorry. So W has two. Let's do that for print um, E. So two. So that's it for today's session. Thank you for watching. Hello, welcome to LearnPy. Um, today we're doing something on Python reserve words or keywords. Now, so Python reserve words are words that cannot be used as variables or identifiers because um, they mean a lot to Python. Okay. So identifiers variables because they mean something to Python are predefined syntax to write in program instructions. Okay. So when you use them as variables, um, they wouldn't work. Okay. So these are some of the um, reserve words that's Python that's um, special to Python. Okay, so let's see something here. I'm giving house and end. Okay, so end is a keyword here. Okay, so let's try something. So using here it gives us true because of the end. Now let's use end as a variable. And you can see it's, it's, its color has changed to green because it means a lot to Python or it's very key to Python. It's a keyword in Python. You can see it's highlighted here. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. End. Okay. So you can see I have an error because of the end. Okay. So when I bring back a house, another variable name, house, my change here to also to house. My print, you see, now we have true, okay. So uh, let's try another reserve word. Let's try or or return. Okay, so you can see return two has been given the highlights the uh, green. So this reserve word shouldn't be used in your um, as variables or identifiers. So you can see we have error here. Um, so hi, given a variable called hi then hi so it works it should work okay and i print i have no error so that's it for keywords and remember to use your keywords wisely hello future designers welcome to another tutorial abcd so today we'll be learning to use the user input or the input method in python so this is supposed to help us get information from the user so um, like a form or something okay so here let me see so let's say uh, i'm going to create a variable called first underscore name so first name and then you can just when you assign it some inputs and then in the parentheses so the input input method and then parentheses and then the quotation comments so what do you want to prompt the user for so here i can input okay let me do that in a new cell okay so first underscore name first underscore name and then I'll assign it. I'm just going to put inputs. So the inputs method in Python, and then parentheses, and then I'm going to prompt them. So the quotation comments. Oops, why is happening? Okay, so quotation comments, and then your first name, or input your first name, or uh, what is your first name, or whichever um, string you want to put there. Okay, so let me run it, and then you can see what just happened. So it's prompting me for my first name. So Kelvin. And then you can see i just have this okay so let's try adding um let's say second name so second underscore name so, so second underscore name and then we'll also assign it an input so equals input into brackets and then in the parentheses for oh, your second name so what is your second name
okay so now let's try printing it out so print uh -oh, um let's try a different approach so what i can do is full name i can type full name so i'll create a variable full name and then what the variable full name is going to do is it's going to add the two names like i'm going to use this variable to store the values of first and then second name okay so we are going to concatenate them or we are going to join them okay so first name so my full name calls and then first name plus okay so concatenate the concatenate or concatenate uh, okay so first name plus second name okay so when i print full name okay i should get um the two names joined together so full name so you can see i am not typing i'm just copying them okay the reason being that uh, i don't want to um, have errors okay so your first name k and then second name k so you can see it has joined the two names okay so this uh, way of also um getting information from your user or prompting your users to input um an information okay so let's try another approach here so here let me clear this or let me copy it. let me clear this so then put first name plus second name and then i'm going to clear this out okay then let's run it okay so print first name plus second name so when i put mouse and then i input cuts okay so you can see mouse cuts so you can see python read from top to bottom okay so from the top to the down okay so now okay so this um just cook and in it so joining two or more words together or strings together okay um is the spelling cook and in it i think there's no u after the zero so cook and in it okay so the input prompts the user okay for so the input and then the prompt to prompt so the input method prompts the user to input um, some details or information about them or about something when you use inputs in the that's the input method in python so let's try something else here so um, in this cell i have prints and then in the parentheses your name is so your name is and then you can put first name so here what i want to do is we want it to write um, the output to come like your name is and then whatever the user puts inside um, will be assigned to the first name so we would have something like your name is kelvin your name is mouse your name is um whatever information you provide okay so i seem to be getting an error so it's either i missed the comma okay so i also put a comma here okay i also put a comma here and then uh if it's not working i would have to clear my memory or restart the kernel so i'm going to have to restart the kernel so restart then let's see if it will work if it doesn't work i'll just change the variable name okay so let me just change the variable name okay then i'm going to copy it and then paste it here too okay so if i run it it should work now so your first name i'm going to put my first name Kel. Now running, you can see now we have your name is Kel, or your name is Mouse, your name is Cut, your name is Space X, your name is whatever name. Okay, so thank you for watching, and then see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Lempi. Today we'll be doing something on commenting. Okay, so commenting uses a pound sign. Okay, to um, so anything after the pound sign isn't executed by or isn't run by Python, so it's ignored by Python. Okay, so anything after the pound sign, okay, so hash or pound sign to stop a code from running or to tell what's the code or the program I was trying to achieve. Okay, so um, okay, so this is good for future review, should in case you revisit, revisit your code. In a while and also for debugging purposes and for teamwork so for people to be able to understand what you are um, trying to achieve within a line of code or a block of code okay so let's see um how to comment so this is a comment okay so remember there is is in green because um, that's a keyword um, for python 
okay so keyword is in some other keywords so uh, this words are recognized by python and then um, shouldn't be used as variables so to comment so to be able to comment or uh, you have to put the pound sign or the hash sign okay so that's a comment okay, so you can see here comments okay so this trend this comment is trying to explain that a single slash would give you uh, flutes okay so comments are good so this multiply so this multiplies two variables okay so we are going to write a line or lines of code to multiply two variables okay so and then store the variable in another variable and then we'll print it out okay so a called to um a assigned three b is assigned one and z is also going to be assigned um, the values of um, these multiplied numbers okay so print z so we are going to print z and z gives us three so a times b should give us three okay so so let's add another value or another variable and then let's see so let's make it add these values or variables so plus d so let's print so it gives us six okay so let's say we want to comment or we don't want a line of code to run so let's say you don't want this code to run we'll put a pound sign and then let's print um oops it's still running uh let's see so to comment out multiple um, blocks, you have to use pound sign. Okay, so every single line of code to comment out, uh, you have to use a pound sign. Now, when I use the pound sign on the print, okay, you see that it wouldn't run. Okay, so now when I take the comment sign, it run. Okay, put a the hashtag sign, hash sign. Okay. So that's how if you don't want every line of code to run, you use the pound sign or the hash sign. Okay, so this multiplies two variables and adds uh, another variable. Okay, so that's that's for commenting. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to another lesson on LimPy. Um, today we're learning type. So what is type? Okay. So type returns a type of a parse variable. So the variable that is um, the actual value that is parse could be a string, float or integer. So here y is equal to 10. Okay, so you want to know the type of um, the bytes the type of 10 or the type that is stored in the uh, y okay so the type in the variable y so we are going to type type and then put in the y so and in y the value that is stored in y is an integer so int okay um, so let's insert another cell and let's try something else here so floats are there's um uh numbers with um decimal points okay so let's k and then string hello so type hello and then let's find the type of k so k is a string okay k is a string and let's try that for lots of floating points so let's create a variable called l equals and then let's put a decimal so one point or four point one point zero and then a type of l so we have floats okay so this type then uh thank you for watching
Hello future developers, welcome to another tutorial ABCD. So today we'll be doing type conversion in Python. Okay, so um, here we'd want to convert, um, let's say, a float to an int or an int to a float. Okay, so to do that, um, let's create this variable u. So you can create any variable, you can type any variable, okay, use any variable. And then you, and then I'm going to assign it a value of 1 plus 2. And then let's print it, um, sorry. Three. Uh, this should in the parentheses should be very close to the print. Okay. So now if I do 2.0, you can see I have 3.0, which is a float. Okay. As usual, the floats to precedence over the integer. So now let's convert this into an int. So what you can do here is to just type int. Okay. So we want to convert this value that's a 2.0 into an int. So in the parentheses, then you can put in your value. That's your floating value. If you run it, you can see. Now our output is now um, an int. So if we find a type of u, we should have an int. Okay, so you can see the output is an int. Okay. So let's see what we can do now. Again, um, so let me clear this. Then run it. You can see we have a float. Okay, we have a float. Oops. Okay. So let's try something else. So u equals, so u equals, and then let's put some values here. Um, let me do 3.0. So we are going to use floats. So 3.0 plus 3.0 should give us 6.0. So let me clear this. I'm going to clear this, and I'm going to print the value of u. Okay, so you can see we have 6.0 for u. Okay. So in order to convert it into um, an int, I need to convert this. Yeah. So in order to convert it to an int, I'll just have to type int and then um, in parentheses, I'll put the variable that I created and then I'll close the brackets or the parentheses. So you can see now it's been converted into an int. Okay. So uh, this is also a way of also um, converting int to float and then float to int. Um, so we might try more here so let's try another way or see so let me see print into brackets so print into brackets u and then let's type here int so i'll convert here to an int okay and then i can do here to int then into brackets and you input the value there okay so we should get an integer value Okay, so you can see we have an integer value for this. Okay. Uh, now, let's see what we can do. Okay, so you can see we have a float. So now let's try working, um, converting an integer to a float. So let's see what, let me see. Okay, so here we can just put floats here. So floats into bracket and then the variable that you created okay and then when i oops so there's an error in line five okay invalid syntax so line five so i think okay so it's because i didn't close the parentheses so line five no i don't need to change the variable so i'll just leave it to you it's just because i didn't close the parentheses so when i close it we should and then so put the parentheses back and i close it and I run it you can see now the one plus three is now converted into a float so we can try to find out the type of um of u here okay and then it should give us a float so let's try another way of doing that so here you can also do floats and then your value and then plus and then floats and then in parentheses you input your value okay so if you run it you should get a float okay so that's 4.0 so these are ways to convert an integer into a float and then a float into an integer by just using this method okay and that's the power of python okay so let's see what we can do now is to Okay, let me just comment this. Convert um, an integer into a float. Let me just convert integer into 
So there are two floats. Okay. So thank you guys for watching and then see you. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial ABCD. So today we are going to be doing um, numerical types. So numerical types um that's with numbers. So the numbers we have integers and then floats. So integers are whole numbers from um, zero, negative one, two, and the and the rest. Um, and the like so floats have decimal points, okay. So floats simply decimal um like half decimal points so you would use floats for things like um speed and then temperature and the likes okay so here let's try something um y equals okay let's create an expression y equals two and let's print y or let's let me try again so y equals two plus three or two plus two so any value that you would want Okay, and then I'm going to print the value of y. So let's see the outputs. Sorry, I have to put so put um, parentheses. So in parentheses, so you can see we have four. Okay, so that's an integer. Now let's create another expression. Y equals two plus three point zero. Okay, so three point zero is a float. Okay, so we are trying to add an integer and then a float so let's see the outputs whether we'll get an integer value or a float value okay so you can see we have 5.0 okay so the floats took precedence over the um, integer okay so if you have uh, a float and an int you should expect the value to be a float okay that's why you're adding them so here let's try finding your type so type into bracket y then type into bracket y so whichever variable you put there you input the variable there so you can see i have a float okay so it took that float for it okay so if i comment this out and then i run it again let's see what we get okay so i think i need to clear the memory but what you can do is to just clear this out or better so just cut it okay so you can just copy this expression okay so you just cut it and then um you put in a new cell and then you run it and then find the type of it okay so here you can see here we have an integer now okay with the other one you should have a float if you insert it in a new cell okay, and then re you run it okay so thank you okay so hello everyone to lempi um so they'll be learning program flow um, or the program steps okay so the program flow is um so the order at which uh, a program should run, so the programmer decides the flow of the program, the step at which or uh, for the program to be executed. Okay. So if you are preparing something, you know how you prepare. So let's say you want to prepare your tea or coffee, or maybe you do um, put your water, you put your warm water, and then you add your sugar, and then you add your milk uh, to prepare your tea. Okay. So um, that's the same way that. Um, uh, you can apply this in programming so the steps are switch uh, you would want your program to run in each line of uh, code so we have the sequential step we have the conditional step and the repeated or the repeat steps so we are going to try it out here so here i'm going to say y equals two and then um, let's say y equals y plus two okay, so i'm going to print using the print function i'm going to print the value of y and then let me hit shift enter or i can use run here okay so four okay so um the value of y that's two plus two get what four so this was how the program runs so the program started from here it assigned the value of two to y and then it came to this line um, y where the expression y plus Two. Okay, so two plus the value here, that's here, that's two, and then they printed it out as four. Okay, so that's the sequential steps, and then we have the conditional step. Okay, so with conditionals, what it does is um, it skips some steps based on um, the expression given. Okay, so let's try the conditional step and see. So x or uh, let's say y equals two, and then um, if if y is um, less than 
just on the let's see then 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 print to so see python indented yes yeah, so when you're using the conditionals it indents it's okay um, so let's print small now let's do less and then uh, so if again if y is greater than uh, let's see y is greater than um, 15 print the color and then print So let's see what is going to happen to print to less than okay so here we assigned a value um y to um two to y and then we are testing if y okay if two is less than ten then we want to print this if y is that's two is greater than fifteen then print greater and then we want to finally print done okay so here we had it printing less because two is less than what ten I escaped this step because um, y is not less than 15 or uh, y is not greater than 15 that's 2 is not greater than 15 so this step is skipped and went straight to print done okay so that's conditionals um, but that will be taught in uh, further lessons as we proceed so let's go to repeat steps okay so look okay, so the, re the repeat step is going to loop through so you want to repeat a number of or series of numbers or something uh, so let's say uh, v equals um, let's say 10 so how v equals sorry how v is greater than 0 Okay, so 10, while well, 10 is greater than 0, print the colon, we want to print V, so let's print V, okay, so you can see it's printing, so you're going to keep printing, 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 okay, so as long as 10 is, le um, 10 is greater than 0, it will keep printing and printing, okay, so that's a, we can do so it would print and print and print and print uh, because 10 will forever be greater than 0. Okay. So for there's a function that stops it from printing. Okay, so let's try that again. Oops, let me change the assign to u, then change it to u. Print. Why isn't it working now? Run. Okay. Okay, so let's change the value here to zero. And let's print y. Okay, so it's printing. So I see we'll print and print because. So you can see it keeps printing. Okay. okay so in order for this to stop, uh, we just have to put break. It's a function called break. Okay. So break. Okay. So it stopped it. Okay. So it has stopped it because using this break. Okay. So that's it. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to another tutorial on LenPy. To learn Python or Python for anybody. Um, today we'll be learning to do something in um, order of evaluation or op um, operator precedence. Okay, so when operators are stringed together, Python needs to know which to do first. Um, bracket which operator takes precedence over the other. 
we have um, the operator precedence rules so from parenthesis okay um, power or exponential or the raised to the power okay multiplication division remainder addition and then left to right so what this is saying is um if you have a string of um, numbers uh, or operators so let's say uh, you want to add multiply divide and subtract um, a string of numbers or operators why you do is um, the one in the bracket is um, the one that is being executed first so parenthesis first uh, before multiplication and then division uh, if there's a remainder i would execute that then addition and then subtraction and then left to right okay so let's say um, this okay so oper uh, parenthesis are respected first Okay, so let's say this let's try this okay. uh, so um this variable o equals two um this expression two plus three times what two and then we are printing o okay so we have eight for it and then we try this expression this same expression just that this time around we put the two plus th um, three in a in parenthesis and then we multiply by two and then we print it and we had 10. These are the same values, okay? The same values. Like we, we got different results or values out of these expressions. Okay. So why is that? Because two plus three, okay, that's five times two will give us 10 uh, because this was executed first. Then uh, here, two plus three, this was five. So five times two is 10. Okay. But um this didn't work this way what i did was um from the operator precedence what happened was multiplication so if these two are in there then it will go to multi uh, multiplication division or remainder so what happened was you rather did three times two which is six and then six plus two which is eight okay unlike this one that we had because it's in parentheses it executed this one first so two plus three five and then five times two and give us ten so as an exercise you can try that on your own or you let's just try it here okay so let me try g equals two plus three times two and then i'm going to print g So eight. And then let's try this. Oops. Let's try G again. G. Cause two brackets two plus three. And go out of the bracket times two. Then let's print G. so i use shift and enter to get a value or you can use run to run it okay, so you can see we are having different values here okay, so that's the other precedence and it's very important it comes in handy okay, so um i think somewhere friend introduced me to pemdas i think this is the normal mathematical um, evaluation uh, we do in the classroom so pemdas parentheses exponents multiplication division addition and then subtraction so pemdas okay but this is what uh, python does okay so that is it for the other precedents and hope to see in the next um, lesson hello everyone welcome to another lesson on lempi python for anybody um today we'll be doing logical operators so this logical operators. So we use and or not. Okay. So remember this and or not in the earlier videos we learned that Python has some keywords. Okay. So you don't need to use those keywords. And we actually did experiment with that. Okay. So now this the logical operator and okay. So this expression here, 
if both expression return true okay then it should give us a boolean value okay so let's say this house is equal to 50 and then we want to print okay we want to test so house is house greater than 40 and that same house value less than 55 okay so if so then true let's print out and see so it gave us true so 50 is greater than 40 and um, 50 is less than 55 and that's true so we have true okay so let's try something else so i'm going to insert a cell uh, let's give a value like uh, like a variable home equals 70 and let's print <laughs> to tell let's test and print the value out so home to home greater than uh, let's say home greater than 60 and then end home less than uh value should we give uh, should we give uh, let's say 80. Okay. so let's print it out shift enter true okay so 70 is greater than 60 and then 70 is less than 80. so we have the boolean true okay so that's for the end and then let's see here um or so we are going to use the uh, logic operator or so if at least one expression returns true so level here is 10 then we are printing level is less than so 10 is less than 10 or 10 is greater than 20 we have false so 10 is not less than 10 neither is 10 greater than 20 we have false so let's try that out so i'm going to insert a cell and then let's try let's give it look equals 20 now let's print it's print two brackets um kilo less than uh, let's see less than two less than let's see 18 or kilo greater than let's say 30 so let's print it out we have false okay so here uh, we have another one price equals two print price greater than three so it's price greater than three we have false and then we have the not okay so not price not okay. so this inverses the result so this here is supposed to test um, the value here so here price greater than three so two is not greater than three <clears throat> so we have false and here we have what not two greater than three we have true why did we get it true okay so the not inverses any value or any expression okay. so not two so two is not greater than three so we have true okay. so the not price greater than three we have true so not three a hey, not two greater than three we have true. so let's try that out let's insert a cell So speed equals three. Let's print into bracket speed greater than five. So we have false. Okay. Uh, let's try that out here too. Let's print speed not sorry not speed greater than uh, let's see uh, so we have true so um, our value three here yeah. so three is not greater than five we have true so we have that's a logic operator. So the not inverses the value 
the expression okay, so not or and then we have end okay, these are some this is the logical operators for, um, that we, we've tested today for our plain python program okay so that's that for logical operators and then see you in our next lesson you can try them out yourself Hello everyone, welcome to another lesson with um, ABCD. Um, today we're doing a comparison operator. Okay, so we're going to go paint Jupyter notebook. Okay, so comparison operators, so what they do. Okay, so this test to see if an expression is true or false. So it gives us a Boolean result, which is true or false. So you can see an expression here, S is equal to six greater than five. Okay, print X. So six is greater than five and so we have true and similarly here we have less than operator y equal to seven less than four so let's print y false so seven is not less than four okay. so let's try that out so we have others here okay so let me insert it so okay let's try um you plus eight greater than five. Let's print you. Where's the error? Uh, print you, print you. Okay, so the error is on the second line, which is the print. Okay, so name error, name you is not defined. Okay, so to handle this error, I think this capital, okay, so remember I said Python, is case sensitive. Okay, so I have to just make this caps. Sorry. Okay, so let's print it. Okay, so true. Okay, so beware, case sensitive, Python is case sensitive. Okay, so eight is truly greater than five. So we have the Boolean true. Okay, so let's so uh, let's try that for less than. Let's get it less than so um r equals let see five less than money so let's print r okay so five is really less than nine let's change it so nine less than five going to print and see so false so nine is not less than five so you had a false and then we have the less than or equal to operator and then we have the greater than or equal to operator so just using the less than sign equals eight okay so let's try that out let me set this out below and i'm going to try let me keep h equals five less than or equal to Seven. And then let me print h. Okay, so true. So sometimes Python already knows you want to print something, so I just use h. So I could decide to bring the print function here, okay, but I just use the h, and it gives give me what's true. Okay, so five is less than or equal to seven. So five is less than. Okay, let's do that for greater than. <clears throat> Sorry. So let's say I equals eight greater than so H greater than or equal to nine. So let's print it. Okay, so false. So eight is not greater than or equal to nine. Okay, so we have false. Okay. So we have the equality operator. Okay, so this one use um two equal signs okay so equals equals um, so three equals equals three true let's try it out so insert cell below and then try p equals um, six equals equals um, let's try six so let me put p true so six equals equals six. so six is equal to six uh, let's try 
putting a different value here, so nine. Then let's print p. So false. Then we have another one called not equal operator. Okay, so the not equal operator I use the exclamation mark and then um, equal sign. Okay, so let's print this value and see what it got. So true. So four is not equal to one. Let's try that out. Let's set a cell. D equals five. Uh, not equal to five. Sorry, seven. And let's print D. True. So five is not equal to seven. Let's try five not equal to five false okay so five not equal to five so we are testing is five not equal to five false five equals five okay so that's that for the comparison operator and i hope to see you in the next lesson thank you hello everyone welcome to another tutorial with uh, on lempi um today we'll be learning augmented operator Okay, so augmented operator. So instead of we doing something like u plus two, okay, we want to add um, the value of two, that's u, and this two, to, um, this is giving us four. Okay, you can simply use um, the operator sign and then equal to sign. So you still get the same um, value. And this works for all the operators. So let's try that out. So let me cancel this and let's try. Uh, let's let's equal. Six. Okay. So we want to add the value of z. Okay, so z equals uh, z plus two. Okay, let's print z. So we got eight. Okay, so six plus two give us eight. Okay, so now let's try the augmented operator. Okay, so that's um, let's see. Um, Z equals six. Then uh, let's try Z plus equals two. Then let's print Z. So you could see we got the same value. Okay, so augmented um, assignment operator is just simple. Okay, so instead of writing a bunch of code, just sim simply doing this should give you the same result. Okay, so let's do that for subtraction. So let's put here, we can put a minus sign, shift enter, equals four. Let's try multiplication. Okay, this you go cell. Okay, 12. Let's try that for division. By eight. Uh, let's try, let's say we want an int integer, we don't want to float. So I'm going to add another division symbol. Okay, so you have an integer not float. Okay. Uh, let's try that for um, what we done here. Okay, so I think we've done most of the operators. Uh, Okay, so that's it. So let's try one last. Okay, so, sorry, let's say A equals four. Then A times equals to four. So four, four should give us 16. So let's print A. Got six. Okay. So that's that for augmented um, assignment operator. Hope to see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to LearnPy. Today, we'll be learning data structures with Python. So, um, data structures are collections of uh, related data, and there are four kinds of uh, data structures. In so we have list to go dictionary and then set. And then they are defined by um, these various um, symbols. Okay, so list has um, square brackets, tuple has a rounded bracket, um, dictionary has um, 
this curly brackets it stores or it keeps keys and then values and then set is defined by putting elements in curly brackets okay, so the differences will be explained um, in, uh, as we go on in this tutorial okay, so but today we'll be focusing on list so a list is a data structure that contains values and this um, values are mutable and then uh, in a mutable you can change the values um, and they are defined curly brackets sorry square brackets okay so here i'm defining a list of yeah, a list so there's my list okay so shopping list and then uh, it's not a good naming i'm supposed to put some items here but the items here are number, numbers and strings okay so shopping i could put fruits uh, tv and all that but uh, so shopping equals one two three and then so these are numbers and then the strings have uh, are in quotation commas okay so you can see and then you close it with and I'm printing out the values. So shopping, when I click on run, it should give me this. Okay, so let me clear this. Clear. And then when I click on run, it should give me the um, items in the shopping list. Okay. okay, so Python, we have something called indexing. So indexing starts with zero. Okay, so Python, um, let's say I want the value yeah, the index or the position of whom. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, we'll be thinking six, but it wouldn't work that way. So let's try something. Okay. Um, input um, seven. Try and input two, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So then put five. Okay. So um, Python is going to start. In indexing from zero. So here is going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and that's how can we got home shopping five. So when we put five here in the square brackets, we got home. Because Python started numbering or indexing from zero. And then we want to find the so let's say I want to find the index position of home. Okay. So we just put shopping dot index so index method and then in the parentheses with your quotation comments the name of um, the value. So let's say I want the index position of eight. So shopping dot index. Okay, so shopping dot index square, then I'll just put eight. And let's print it. So six. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so the index position of eight is six. And then let's say you want to add um, another value or item to your list so we have a method called append so shopping dot append okay in the um, in the rounded brackets you put the value there it could be a number or a string okay. and then we are printing it out so you can see k has been added to our list and then let's say i want to get all the items from our list so shopping and then in the square brackets i'll put colon then you can see it's fetching us or copying all the list items once. Okay. Then uh, I'm printing the length of our list. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the length of our list is what? Eight. Okay. Uh, you can either do it this way or this way. L E N. L E N is bracket. And the name of your um, your list. Yeah. So we have eight elements or items in our list. And then if you want to remove, we have the pop method. Okay. So when you use dot pop method okay, why does it it takes out the last L um, item in the list okay so you can see shopping dot pop so it has picked k out so the k has taken k out of the list okay. and then we have shopping dot uh, we have dot count the method dot count okay so the count method um so here you want to find out the number how many times an, uh, an item occurs in the list so here we are searching for how many times each occurs in the list okay so it gives us two so let's check so each occurs twice in the list okay um let's see here two we want okay so here insert so we have the insert method so dot insert what we are trying to get here is uh we want to insert so in the index position that's um zero one two Okay, we want to insert me. 
to be in the um, in this position as two. Okay, so you see zero, one, two. Okay, so the the index and then the value. So index and then the value. So insert and then the um, bracket. Okay, you put the index. Well, that's a in that position where you would want your value to be the comma and then um, the name or the value. Okay, so index and then the value. So you can see it here. Me is in the index position of two. So zero, one, two. Okay. Uh, here we printed the length of our list. And then we have list slicing. So we want to get all the items in the list starting at index position one. Okay, so index position one. So um so zero, one, so one. So it's going to print from one, so which is two, and then to print all the items following two. Okay, so you can see here. So in that position one, okay, so zero one. And then it prints from that one to the final or the last item. Okay, so here we want to print from one to the fifth element. Okay, so okay, so here so one one wait, let's see one. So zero one. Okay, so from two and then two and then two three four five. So we're going to print also zero through from the index position but one so zero one so then to one two three four one two three four okay so um zero one okay so one is going to start from the index position one then to print two three four five you can see we have it here being printed so let's change it to six then let's print it out so zero one so it's going to start from one okay one two three four five and then six okay. you see we have it here okay so to clear everything from our list we have a method called dot clear and then when you print it out there's nothing here okay so uh let's see uh, if you want more method just hit here and then hit the tab key then gives you other things that can be done. Okay. And then if you want explanation, just here then hit the tab key. So we shift and then the tab key to give you the uh, documentation. So, um, thank you for watching. See you in our next tutorial. Hello everyone, welcome to Limpy. Okay, so today we're doing dictionary. So dictionary um is an audit collection of data values that can be changed in the they are indexed. Uh, they are defined by including keys and values using um, curly braces, a colon, and then a comma. So, a colon, a colon, a colon, and then a comma. Okay, so as an example here, should explain these. Okay, so here there's a provision, there's provision, and then um, there's a key. Okay, so the colon sign separates a key and its value. So here's a key, and then there's a value. So key and then value. Here's another key and then here's a value. Okay, so remember the colon separates separates the key from the value. Okay, so let's try that out. So let's print this and let's see what comes. Okay, so you can see we have sugar, brown sugar, pen, and then blue. So let's try something. So names equals um curly braces. And I'm going to give um mill. Sorry, so quotation comes and then middle. Also, the quotation comes colon, and then I'll give a name. So let's see. Quotation comes and then curl. So also this, I'm going to create another um, key. So comma, and then uh, let's say female. Quotation comes, quotation comes female. Also the cushion, the quotation comments colon and then quotation comments and then I'll put the um, zeros. Okay, so let's print it also names. Let's check what's in our dictionary. Okay, so you can see we have it here. So male kill female figures. Okay, so let's try let me insert another cell. And let's try making a list of uh, names. Okay, so names 
um, equals calibrations uh, males quotation quotation comments males and then colon and then I'm going to make a list of names so um, square brackets quotation comments cal comma quotation uh, comments Frank Okay, so uh, let me take the comma here, and then let me do here, comma, the quotation comma. Okay, and then comma, let's say female. So, why do I keep forgetting the quotation comma? So, female. So, this is our key females. And then, um, colon, then we're going to get our, create our values. So, um, that's our list of values. So inside the square brackets, I'll put a colon, sorry, quotation comments. And then I'll type a name. So rules, comma, and then quotation comments, and then um, Mary. Okay. So let's print the house. So names, let's access our and values so we can see we have them out here okay so here um, we can try to find the values okay so values of uh, let's say um, males okay so let me set a cell below and then i'll just type males and then square brackets let's say cal sorry Males, sorry, names. Okay, so I want to access the values in the, um, that's the males. So names, square brackets, and then I'll put males. Okay, so let's print out. Why is arrow males? Uh, so names, males. So in line one, we have an error. We cannot define, so we need to define it as a string. Okay, so remember, the males is a string, quotation comments. So you can see we have Frank and then Carl as uh, the values for our key emails. Okay. okay, so let's insert another cell and then let's try accessing um, like our provision, um, like the keys. Okay, so we want to access the keys. So names dot key dot keys and then parentheses. So these are our dictionary keys. So we have males and females as our key value. And we can do the same for the values so we set below. So names dot values. Parentheses. Okay. So we have our values, so our dictionary values. Okay, so here what this is trying to do is um, it's trying to create um, another key and then another variable uh, as a name, another value. So let's try that here. So I'm just going to copy. Um, well, I'm just type. Sorry, insert a cell below, and then to be able to add this. And so I want to add more va uh, values and a key, or a key and then a value. So let's say names, square bracket. Sorry, square bracket. And then I'm going to give my key a name, let's say um, friend, friends, friends, then out of it, colon, no, sorry, equals, and then I'll give it a value to, to do. Okay, so names, and then let's print it out. So you can see friends, Lou has been added to. Um, our list, uh, our dictionary. So, okay, so this is another way of um, adding two dictionaries. Okay, so these are two dictionaries, and then using the update function, you can get them added as, as printed here. So this notebook will be shared in the 
Uh, you can, it will be shared in the uh, calls so you can download them and then upload them for testing. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to LearnPy. Today we'll be doing sets as part of the data, data structure um, course. Okay. So why is sets? Okay, so sets are an ordered collection of values without duplicates and then are represented using the curly braces. Okay, so uh, the curly braces is also something with dictionaries. Okay, so dictionary uh, uses the curly braces, but it has a key and then a value. But that of sets only uses the comma and then the curly braces. So that's it. So let's see an example here. So this um, a set of these values, and then we are printing it out. So let me print it out. Shift Enter. Okay. So it gives us the same values. But let's see here. You could see mango, and then mango. Mango appears twice. So let's see the results here. The results here, you can see, we only have one mango. Okay. So sets removes duplicates uh, values. Okay, so let's try that out. Okay, so let me see names. Uh, equals then curly braces quotation comments me let me say my name is me and then he let me print names okay so we have he and me so let's try that for the duplicates control c control v and then i'm going to add uh, let's say me again okay so printing it out Okay, so you can see it took the me out okay so we have only one me printed out so sets are good ways for uh, removing or if you want values um, to remove duplicate values you use sets okay so let's see what other method to use okay so we have an add method okay so here fruits.add strawberry let's say I want to add another names so control v sorry uh, names dot uh, add Brackets, um, quotation comments, uh, let me see him or she. She. Okay, let me do prints. Okay, so this wouldn't work. Let's give us, so I'm going to take this out. Let's try that again. So names dot add into brackets. Let's print. Okay, so you can see we've had um, him added. Okay. okay, so let's see what other function we can do here. So, um, so here we are testing if um, banana is in fruits. Okay, so let's print it out. So it's going to give us a boolean. So banana is not part of the fruit. So uh, let's go here and let's see um, print to bracket uh, let's see he in names okay so true so we have he in the uh, in the names set okay and it gave us a boolean true let's see what other method we can use Okay, so here, this set, we are testing these two values to see, uh, using the intersection method to see what variables um, um, these two sets have in common. So let's print and see. So we have pepe. So pepe is in the fruit, and then we also have pepe in the vegetables. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, and set another cell. I'm going to create name, name, underscore one. Because You, comma, and then I. So name two, name underscore two equals uh, calibrations. Uh, let's say me, me, comma, hey, comma, and then she.
Okay, so print the parentheses. I want to find name one, name underscore one dot intersection intersection. Then parentheses name underscore two. So let's print it out. Okay, so me. So you can see we have me and then me in name one and then name two using the intersection method okay so we can use um let's try another method and set another cell just paste this then we have difference okay so difference uh, where's the error set object has no actual difference if uh, okay so difference okay okay so the difference we have i and u so i and u are in part of name two okay so using the difference to see um to compare you know, the values which are in uh, name two okay let's see any other method here so we have another method called union so union let's print this out okay so union is going to join everything okay so let's insert another cell paste this i'm going to change here to union so name one dot union okay, so you want to merge the two sets okay, so you can see we have them here are you she and me so here are you with she and me okay so you can see it has removed because me appears two here twice here it has removed the me uh, one of the means and then we have only one me so that says uh, there are other methods we can use um, but uh, we are going to stay here for this particular session okay so thank you for watching uh, watching and see you on next tutorial hello everyone welcome to learn power with abcd um, today we're doing um, tuple so a tuple is a it's a type of data structure in python of a collection which is ordered and then uh, immutable or unchangeable and then you define that using the brackets okay round brackets okay so here this is how you initialize um, a tuple so here x equals two and then the brackets one two three and then four and here i was finding the type of x and then it told me a tuple okay so i'm going to let's try that out so uh, i'm just cancel it and then so x so x equals and then run brackets one comma two comma three comma and then four okay and i want to find out the type of the type of uh, x so i print it out x is a tuple or a tuple okay so let's say i want to get the value at the index position of uh, let's say uh, two okay so let's the index position of uh, so let's say x and then square bracket let's say two okay so the index position the value of the item at the index position two is three so let's count it so zero one and then two and that's why we have three so remember python starts indexing at zero so zero one and then two so the index position of two as a value or item is three okay so let's say we want to get the index position from the last not we want the last item okay so the last item so to do that uh, so x square brackets and then minus or negative one and print it you can see we have four okay four and then we can even do say okay so let's do here two so we have three let's do one okay we already have one okay so two and that's position two uh from the back so neck one neck two so it give us three neck one neck two neck three so let's try neck three negative three we have two okay okay so slicing so let's try doing slicing in triple in tuple so to slice you use the operator this colon sign okay 
So this prints out all the items in the list. So let's try that out. So, so X and then square brackets, uh, just the colon, should print everything. Should print everything in the uh, in the tuple. Okay. So you can see we have everything here. And then this is going to print out all the items in the list. Okay, so similarly, if you use the zero and then colon, okay, this is going to start at the index position zero, and then anything after the colon is going to be printed. Okay, so anything after the colon is going to be printed. So uh, let me clear cell so, and then clear the output for screen cell. So, okay, so let's try that out. So x square bracket zero and the colon. This prints out, so you can see we have one, two, three. So starting at the index position zero. Okay, so it's just the same thing as only using the colon to print everything out in the tuple. Okay. So here, here we want to print everything starting from zero and then taking out the last item. So let's try that out. So I'm going to click. Okay, so X and then square brackets, square, square brackets zero and then the colon and then minus one so let's print that out so you can see we have one two three and then it's taking out the four okay so in this position from zero so that's one two three and then it took out the four so using this minus one uh, let's try minus two and see okay so you can see one two zero one okay and then two so it prints from zero. So here is negative one and then negative two. Okay. So it will, it's going to print only this one and then two. Uh, let's change this to so similarly here zero colon one should print out only um, the first item. So zero colon one. Okay. So zero colon one okay so uh when you look here okay so zero one okay so it's supposed to print two but we have one because um when you're using slice and slicing doesn't print the uh, the last value okay so let's say zero and then one okay and that's why so one so the one wouldn't be printed but it will print um the zero 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 it <laughs> sorry um item Okay, so let's try putting two here and let's print so one and two so one two so zero one and then two okay so you're supposed to print one two three but it was going to take the last item last one so zero one two so it's going to take this one out and then print one and two as you can see here so the last um, value isn't printed not the last value but the index position so zero one two okay it isn't printed but um this before it is going to be printed so here is going to print from like print the so it is going to print all to the third item okay so let's try um, x square brackets and then Let's see four. Oh. So we, there's an error because um, one, two, three, four is is out of the boundary. So let's change it to three and then print. Sorry, there's supposed to be a colon. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, so let's check here. So zero, one, two, three. Okay, so it's not going to print the four, but we'll print this a one, two, and three. Okay. Okay, so here, although tuples or tuples are unchangeable or immutable, the nested tuple can be assigned a value. So here you could see we have the um, tuple sets with these values or items. Okay, and inside the um, tuple we have a set, that's a list, we have a list. Okay, inside the tuple, the tuple. Okay, so here, what is happening here is, um, so here, zero, one, two, three. 
and then four. So this whole is a set on its own. Okay. So if we want to make changes inside this, we need to get a position. So zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so four, that's our list. So this whole list is in the fourth uh, in this position. And then if we want to make changes here to one, the value one. So we want to assign six to the value one. And that's why we have the square bracket six. So if we print it out, you could see here the one isn't. So this one has been assigned the value of six. So let's try that out. Hello everyone, welcome to LearnPy. Um, today we'll be doing conditionals. Okay, so let's set out how to explain something here. So um, conditionals, okay, uh, let's first go here. So conditionals or conditional statements add some level of intelligence to your program and that your program will be able to handle and then make decisions. So these are the conditions. We have if, else, elif, nested if, and then switch case statements. So this, it follows a syntax, okay? So the if expression and then the statements. So we have the else and then the statement. Um, so as you can see here, but let me explain here first. So indenting is very key or important in the syntax of Python. Uh, wrong index could code, code cause a line or block of code not to run. So um, some um, IDs or uh, some IDs or text editors come with like auto indenting. So if your if your system doesn't come with auto indenting, uh, you'd have to use four spaces, okay, to auto indent uh, to manually indent um, your code, um, okay. Um, so to do that, um, you'd have to check to um, tune your indentation command in your IDE. Uh, so whichever um, text editor you're using, you will want to go and check it on and off because um, indenting uh, wrong indenting might cause your program not to run. So the if expression ends with uh, a colon, okay, ends with a colon. Okay, so let's see, let me explain something here first. Okay, so here, okay, so there's um, something, a kind of a small code I was trying to create with um, App Inventor, MIT App Inventor. Okay, so here on screen initialize, we want to test, okay, so if the device has, um, Present device has a fingerprint scanner, then it should authenticate the person's uh, fingerprints. Else, it should call a notifier and then no fingerprint sensor. Okay, so it will show an alert on the person's device that there's no um, fingerprint scanner. And then here we have the if and then the else if, okay. So the if, okay, and its expression, and then the else if with its expression. So here is testing if um, it has a scanner and then it will authenticate the person fingerprint and then else if okay so else if the person doesn't have the fingerprint scanner then it should show um, this error uh, notice and then it should call a floating button to show okay so the floating button i had to follow it to where the floating button floating button okay so the floating button allows the person to view this url in um, the browser okay so that is for uh, making like intelligence your app or your python program to be intelligent okay so using the if or the conditionals okay so here there's a simple if okay so here you are uh, creating a, var a variable called speed and then we assign it a value called um, a value 60. now if speed okay is greater than 50 then it should print that's fast okay so when we printed it out, give us that first. So let's try that out. I'm going to insert a cell below. I'm going to create um, I'm going to create a value called temp. So temperature equals let's say 20. 20. So if um temp then is um greater than excuse me greater than let's say um, greater than let's say 10 okay sorry i have to add a colon okay so colon 
Okay, so you can see when you added a colon, it's um, data space, you know, indentation for us to so print into brackets. That's cold. That's cold. Okay. So let's try that. So we run it. Okay, so that's cool because um, temp is greater than. But let's rather do it last hot. Uh, not from your with this temperature thing, so. But let's, okay, so that's cool. Okay, so we printed that's hot. Hey, sorry, that's hot. Okay, so temp. Okay, so let's see something. I'm going to de indent it and then when I print. You see, we have an error. Then our trace block is in the line. That's a print. Okay, so expected an indent block. Okay, so to do that, one, two, three, and four. Okay, for it to work. So four spacings, uh, spaces gives you a good intent. Okay indentation okay. so let's see here so here you can um, assign like a multi-line um, assignment of variables so here i declared a variable x and y equals two and five okay. so two is assigned to x and then five is assigned to y okay. so if x okay x plus two is less than y which is five then uh, you create a variable called a then it should print the um, that whatever is stored in the variable let's see okay and then since two is less than y it did print a okay so let's try that out so let's set the cell below we are going to type the same thing so x i'm doing x comma um y equals let's say three comma and then five so if x is less than uh, x is less than y, so we bring the colon. Then let's store this value in a string. In this variable equals then the um, quotes hello. So we're going to print. st okay so two um that's three is less than y and that's why i printed this okay so let's see um, let's go to this side okay so that was for the if okay. so now let's do the if else okay so if else so let's see how it's written so your expression and then your statement okay and then your else and then the statement okay. so here what happened here is if x is greater than y then it should do this okay so we are storing this in this and then you should print it out else you should what print this thank you okay so if x is greater than y which is x is 2 and then 2 um 2 2 is not greater than y, which is 5. 2 is not greater than 5. So it's what skipped this line and then went to print this. Okay. So it, it works, it moves so or it runs through all this. Um, if the condition isn't satisfied, then to move to this, then it prints this. Okay. So we are going to try that out. Uh, this is set. So we can type the same thing um, x, comma, uh, y equals. 3 comma 10 or 20 so if x is x is greater than y and then colon let's store create a variable and then store something in that variable uh, let's see hello hello uh, hello uh. and then else colon um, sc equals mamma mia mamma mia mamma 
Mama Okay, so we're going to print SC. Sorry, here we have to add ST, so print ST. Okay, so let's see what happens. So it prints Mamma Mia. So it went through this and then um, the condition isn't satisfied. So it's started the condition is um satisfied here. So and that's why it printed the value here or whatever expression is um coded here. Okay, so move through this, this isn't satisfied, then move through else so that uh, it's satisfied, the condition is satisfied, and that's why I printed it. Uh, didn't print this, but printed this. Okay, so we have the elif, elif statement. So this only executes one aspect of the code. So speed cost 30. If speed is greater than 40, then print that as fast. Elif speed, elif, if um, elif speed greater than 20, do not over speed. Okay, so here, if, okay, so no expression, but with the elif, the elif gives an expression. So when you check this, okay. So this is an example of elif, okay. So if this is not said, then another expression, then you should do this, okay. So let's try that out. So I'm going to insert a cell, insert a cell below. Uh, okay, so let's create uh, temp. Greater than um, 120, bring a colon, print into brackets the quotes, and then uh, that is hot. Else, sorry, not else, a leaf. Greater than let's say 90 in the colon, then print that is wrong. Okay, so let's see what do you think it will be um, the um, printed statement will be or the output would be. So let's see that. Yes, okay, so that is one. Okay, so if temp is greater than 120, so 100. It's not greater than 120, so it went through this. Then there's a leaf if temp 90 plus if 100 is greater than 90, then you print that is one. Okay, so 100 is indeed greater than 90, so we printed it out. So that was our output that is one. Okay, so you can see here a nested um, if and then a leaf. So if speed is greater than 40, print do not over speed. A leaf speed greater than 20, print this. Elif speed greater than so a whole lot so you can do a whole lot of um elif 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 as can see as you can see here okay so you can add lots of elif or else if conditions here okay so we have the switch switch statement and then nested if okay so um that should be it for conditionals and I think uh, you have to do a lot of experimentation and then test on the elif and then if and then the switch in the nested statements okay so thank you for watching see you on this tutorial